Good afternoon my friends, this is Paul. And I know my last couple of videos were filmed with an HD camera, but my computer has been giving me a lot of problems with uploading from that camera lately. So for this video I want to really give it my all in a comfortable sitting position without having to worry about all that craziness, especially because the last were video game reviews, this is more of a moral Catholic analysis on a subject that came up when I was on Facebook. So I made a post in one of the Facebook groups, and some of you watching this probably already know what it is, but in case you don't, I, long story short, said that I didn't like philosophy, and I found it boring. And a lot of people were really offended by that. Don't ask me why. It sounds a little bit ridiculous why they're getting so huffy about it, but one person brought up an interesting question. He said, how can you be so religious, yet find philosophy boring? Now, I have to admit, philosophy and religion do seem like they go hand in hand. It's pretty hard to find any religion, apart from maybe postmodernism, if you can consider that a religion, where philosophy doesn't come into play as far as understanding all of the doctrines and rules because even atheists have doctrines, and that is, there is no God. That's their doctrine. So you can't call Catholics hypocrites for saying we have rules when other religions do too. Slightly off topic. Anyway, obviously there are Catholic philosophers that even the Protestants acknowledge. There's St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Augustine, or Augustine, however you want to pronounce it, and even outside of the Catholic Church, there are masterminds like C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, and the usual crowd like Chesterton that were very deep intellectual thinkers, and they loved to ponder the secrets of life and especially God's nature. And sometimes they used their skills of deep pondering to write books, and in the case of Lewis and Tolkien, fiction to further explore those ponderings. However, that doesn't necessarily answer the base question, and that is, do you have to be into philosophy to be a Catholic? Now, if I were a Protestant viewing this, I would probably say, oh, okay, Paul, I'm not going to accept anything you have to say if it's from sacred tradition. you got to go by sola scriptura here, to which I'd respond, okay, I'll just use my ace attorney finger and say, take that! Here is my evidence! The Book of Job! You see, in the book of Job, Job goes through a lot of suffering, and the book sort of phrases it as it was inflicted by the devil. To be more precise, the Satan, or the accuser, as it's written in the original language. And Job, of course, goes through this gigantic string of questions, and woe is me, and why did this happen, and why, if God is so good, why does he allow all this suffering to happen? And then God himself, by the end of the book, ends up communicating with Job directly and asks him a bunch of questions to which Job can't answer a single one. And then God basically says, in, of course, the ancient language of the time, Job, if you can't answer even one of these simple questions, like how's the world held up, how the heck are you supposed to know the answer to anything? So Job finally just says, okay, God, you're the creator of the universe. You know everything. I know nothing in comparison to you. So, <coughs> oh, God bless me. 